Good afternoon, and thank you all for logging in to our first time exhibitor webinar. Uh, it is my, my name is Lisa Girardi, and I am uh, the Director of Exhibitor Services for the Chicago Dental Society. So it is uh, my pleasure to introduce one of America's leading experts on exhibiting success. Since 1998, excuse me, since 1985, he has executed over 200 trade shows and is continually researching the exhibiting strategies and best practices of highly successful companies. He's president of Competitive Edge, a Charlotte, North Carolina-based exhibiting marketing, consulting, and training firm. He's, since 1991, he has helped his exhibiting clients turn their exhibiting investments from expensive appearances into profitable investments. His clients have realized over $500 million in combined results from trade shows. Here today to present driving qualified booth traffic, I'll turn the webinar over to Jefferson Davis. Thank you, Lisa. And again, thank you to everybody for logging in. Um, the subject matter of today's webinar, I think, is one of the most important factors that influences the overall success of an exhibit. We're going to walk you through a proven planning model, which will help you identify and attract enough of the right attendees to your exhibit. So driving qualified booth traffic. This program is part of the Chicago Dental Society's commitment to exhibitor knowledge, satisfaction, and success. Um, this year, CDS launched an exhibitor success and ROI center. This is basically a 24-7, 365 free knowledge portal that you and your entire staff can access whenever you want to pick up practical information on how to make trade shows more productive and profitable. This year we've got two webinars. The first one today is on driving qualified booth traffic and the next one will be on Thursday, January 8, 2015 on the topic of measuring and reporting exhibiting results and ROI both of these critical topics to success. I hope you'll log in for the next webinar also. You can also download and access a series of topical how-to exhibiting articles and there's an Ask the Trade Show Experts Q&A where you can submit questions anytime about trade shows. I suggest that you favorite place or bookmark the ESRC, share it, the link with everybody on your team and most importantly, check back frequently because we will be continually uh, adding new content. Uh, this is all part of CDS's commitment to delivering maximum value for you as exhibiting companies. So um, let's, let's start off here. I want to launch with a poll. Um, I would like to ask you, uh, I'm going to flash some factors in this poll. And I would like to ask for your opinion on which of these factors do you feel most impacts traffic at your booth. You can only check one, so check the one that you feel most impacts traffic in your booth. The poll is live now. Click the radio dial button on your screen. You can pick one answer. I'll give you just a moment to do that. Okay, we've got about 50% of participants have uh, voted so far. Um, if you're looking away at your emails or other places, come back with me. I promise you this next 45 minutes is going to be extremely valuable in terms of your success at the upcoming show. We're at 80% of the votes. If anyone hasn't voted, now is your chance. I'll give you just a moment and I will share the results. Here we go. Okay, uh, you're seeing on the screen the uh, results of the poll, and what we're finding here is that they're pretty much all over the screen. Um, four, four out of ten of us feel like where our booth is located on the show floor is the most important factor. Uh, second is your pre and at show marketing efforts, which is the topic matter of today. Third is the quality of your product services, and then it goes to company reputation and the size of your booth. Um, I want to speak to this booth location issue. Um, exhibit Surveys has been doing research 
since 1963 on trade shows. And they've done several qualitative and quantitative studies to determine the impact of booth location and the overall profitability and success of the exhibit. And I know this is going to surprise you, but they cannot make a direct correlation between where you're physically located on the floor and the ultimate results you get from your exhibit. To be sure, some locations appear to be better than others, but here's the thing. Um, never let your location be the reason you fail or, for that matter, the reason you succeed because sometimes you can't really control where that location is. And the, the content we're going to present today on targeted pre-show marketing is the great equalizer that takes booth location out of play. Okay, those of you, the 36% that said the pre and at show marketing, I'm in agreement with you there. You know what, uh, there's, we're going to talk about trade show attendee behaviors and how they've changed and why today showing up, just renting space showing up and hoping is, um, doesn't work anymore. Uh, it's a strategy for failing at shows. And those other factors, you know, all these things can play a role, but I do believe that it is your, um, your marketing efforts. Uh, pre and at, to get in the mind and get on the agenda of enough of the right people that's going to make the big difference. So thanks for participating in the poll. So let's talk a little bit about this um, uh, topic. So we're going to hit the, the attendee behavioral changes. I'm going to give you some insights as to how they've changed and, and, and reveal why we believe marketing your exhibit is a must do. Then uh, we're going to walk you through this eight-step planning process. You're going to take a few of the initial steps here in today's uh, webinar. You're in a perfect time frame, you know, with a little more than two months till uh, showtime to be able to execute what we talk about. Uh, then we're going to give you just a very quick overview of uh, some of the marketing ops that are available. Several of them are free, so we want you to know about them and be using them. And then finally, I'll, I'll wrap up today's uh, webinar with a, uh, an, an example of what an integrated campaign looks like for two sizes of exhibitors and, and show you what a campaign looks like in action. So uh, if you're going to succeed at shows, okay, if they're going to deliver measurable financial value beyond cost and they're going to visibly support core business objectives, there are four critical factors that you need to focus on as an exhibitor. Number one is outcomes. You really have to ask the major question, when the doors close, 90, 180 days after the midwinter meeting, how will you know you succeeded? From there, you're going to want to set goals, basically reverse engineer your outcomes when you reach out and go, you know, six months, what does success look like? And then you're going to have to create an action plan and execute. On the Exhibitor Success and ROI Center, there is a great article which will walk you through exhibiting by objectives. Okay, I would strongly suggest you read it. Uh, it's a game changer. Today, we're going to really hit the attraction piece, which is what you do to get in the mind and on the agenda of enough of the right people. The other factor will be the experience. The experience has to do with your exhibit, your product demonstration presentation, and your staff. And I got some good news for you. This year, for the first time, CDS is providing all exhibitors with a 21-point exhibiting effectiveness evaluation. Me and my team of trade show experts will be on the show floor in Chicago, and we will be visiting your booth and doing a uh, expert-level evaluation and giving you a report, uh, a five-page report. Uh, and you're going to love this. Uh, we're we're going to look at exhibit. We're going to look at your product service presentation demonstration. We're going to look at your staff. We will not take any time or need any of your time at the show. We know you're there to work and sell, but w w you'll see us in action. We'll be wearing black uh, shirts with, that says e uh, Exhibiting Effectiveness Evaluator on it. Um, so we're going to help with the experience. And then finally, the follow through. Uh, what happens when the door closes uh, in terms of lead management, measurement, and reporting results? You do these four things well, you succeed at every show you do. If you neglect any one of these four, uh, you're going to struggle, and you're not going to get what you can and should be getting. 
And so our commitment over time is to continually bring you the best thinking and the best practices on how to execute a profitable exhibit. That's what this is all about. So let's talk about driving booth traffic. There's a cartoon on the screen. You know, the guy walks up. He's got the uh, bag there. We call him the trick-or-treater, right? He opens it up. Uh, what you got? Fill her up, and he's on his way. So you've got to think right now, you know, the first major question is, you know, there are a lot of people uh, that attend the show, thousands and thousands. And, and first of all, not all those people are your ideal visitor, one. And two, physically, you can't handle all those people. So you really got to start thinking about who is it that we really want and need to see at our booth, okay? One of the um, sound bites I'll give you, you may want to jot this one down because it plays right into this cartoon, is what you use to attract is who you'll attract. This example on the screen right now of the cartoon, I call this the trick-or-treater. Okay, you've got what, the candy bowl or, you know, pick up the tchotchke or the pen or whatever. And, and so that's, I mean, is that really who you want at your booth? I don't think so. Okay, so let's talk about trade show attendee behaviors and how they've changed. Okay, the first big change uh, which we're seeing is they're registering uh, closer to the physical date of the show. You know, in years past, it seemed like they used to be two, three months ahead of the curve. Sometimes now they're waiting until two to three weeks. And the Chicago Dental Society is doing everything they can do to drive pre-registration farther in advance, including discounts, incentive discounts uh, for registering uh, them and their staff. Um, they're doing everything they can do, but still it's a trend that just know that that's one thing that's happening is they're registering closer to the show. Second. Um, and, and this is not just at CDS, by the way. These are uh, trade show trends across North American trade shows. Uh, they're spending fewer number of total days at the show. You know, it used to be anywhere from 2.6 to 3.9 days at a show. Now it's down to 1.5 to 2.6 days. So most attendees have chopped anywhere from a day to a day and a half off their time at show. And it's not because they don't value shows. It's because, like you, me, and everyone else, uh, they have less time to be away from the practice. There's more demands. So uh, they want to get more done in, in, in less time. Okay? They're looking for more content, and they're looking for more useful, practical information that they can take back to the practice and put to work. And they're looking to you and I as exhibitors to deliver this. Number four, three out of four attendees are arriving with an agenda. They've already kind of determined, um, you know, where they're going to be, what sessions they're going to attend, uh, what social events they're going to go to, where their blocks of time in the exhibit hall are going to be. Uh, they've got a hit list of exhibitors that they want to visit. Okay, the average attendee will stop and cross the carpet line of 26 to 31 exhibits on average. I want you to think about that number for a minute here now, okay, because we've got uh, almost 800 exhibiting companies, okay, and the average attendee does not have time to stop at them all and just walk up and down every aisle and just kind of fall into booths at random. Half of their exhibit stops are pre-planned. They've already decided before they got to the show, I'm going to go see this company, this company, this company. I've got these questions. I want to learn about this. I'm having this problem. So they're building that agenda. Half of their stops are pre-planned. And in spite of all these changes, less than 20% of exhibitors execute well-conceived pre-show marketing plans. Too many exhibitors do what I like to call exhibit by hope. They rent space, they show up, and they hope. They hope the attendees get in the hall. They hope out of 800 booths they pass theirs. They hope something grabs their attention and makes them want to stop. And I'll tell you very directly here, if you're not satisfied with the results you're getting from shows and you want to turn this thing around quickly, marketing your exhibit 
is the most important thing you can do, okay? Think about it another way. Knowing that 8 out of 10 of your competitors are not going to be doing it at all would be another really good reason for you to do it, okay? So how do you market? <laughs> how do you get attendees to your booth? Well, Dogbert, you know, the Dogbert School of uh, uh, Trade Show Consulting here gives us great advice. He says, hey, your booth's got to grab attention. You can use magic tricks, special effects. You can use, uh, sorry, my thing's jumping, uh, raffles. Uh, you can use booth babes. And he brings it together and says, for the best result, Create the combine all four and create the, the illusion that you're raffling off the booth babes. Okay. Well, while this is funny, you know, this is not the way. Remember what we said: what you use to attract is who you'll attract. If you use food from the candy bowl to a popcorn machine to anything like that, who are you attracting? Hungry people. If you use beverages, uh, coffee, tea, smoothies, anything like that, water, who are you attracting? thirsty people. If you put a fishbowl, drop your card in here for a chance to win this or that. Who are you attracting? Contestants. Okay, are, Is that really who you want at your booth? Probably not. I think who you're looking for is people who, who can influence or make buying decisions for what you sell and has a need or an opportunity that you can help them solve or seize. That's who we're really looking for. So if that's not the way to get traffic, how do we get it? We follow the eight-step exhibit marketing planning process. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through in the rest of this webinar these eight steps. I want you to have your workbook, I want you to have a pen, and I want you to have a calculator because this is going to be very hands-on and I'm going to have you do some physical exercises in this web webinar so you can get off here and put this thing to work. So let's go get them. Step one, it all starts with your exhibiting goals. Why are you exhibiting? When the doors close 90, 180 days after the Chicago Dental Show, how will you know you are successful? What I want you to do right now is look at the list on the screen, and I want you to put a check mark, underline, or circle by what you are calling your top three reasons or goals for exhibiting. What's it about? Is it about visibility? Is it about awareness? You got a new product you're introducing? Is it about relationship management with customers, prospects, suspects, key opinion leaders? Is it about positioning your company or your products? Is it about differentiating? Is it about educating the market? Hey, one of the big reasons why attendees come to shows, specifically medical shows, is to learn. Okay, is it about educating? Is it about generating leads at the show? Is it about sales, writing sales orders at, sales orders after the show? Is it about positioning your company as thought leaders? And it could be about a, a lot more, but those are the big reasons. So your first step, I want you to take a swing right now at your top three reasons for exhibiting. Go ahead and write those down. I'll give you a moment. All right. So now you've got a sense of, okay, here's why we're exhibiting. Here's what we're trying to accomplish. As we get into developing your target marketing system, you will see that certain media will support certain goals better than others, which we'll talk about as we move through this. Okay, now, step number two, okay, is I want you to answer the question, who do you need or want to interact with at the show? Okay, and the ways that you can get to that, okay, is by defining the type of practice or the specialty defining the specific job functions or titles within. Size might play a role in terms of the number of uh, operatories or the number of patients or the number of practices. Uh, and there might be other things that might play, or, play a role for you. Uh, if you take a look on the right-hand side of the screen here, you will see last year's attendance. We've got almost 7,000 dentists. Uh, we've got almost 4,000 hygienists and 2,800 assistants. Um, I will caution you as you define the job title and function, some of us will say, well, we just want to get to the dentist. Do not overlook the hygienists and the assistants and the lab techs and the office personnel. They often have major influence in uh, purchase decisions. 
Okay, so cast a wide net on job function and title. Okay, so I want you to think about step two, sit down and in a broad brush stroke, define your ideal visitor. Then I want you to step back and look at your profile and I want you to think about your products and services and here is a really powerful question. Relative to what you do, what are likely to be their problems, their needs, their concerns, their bottlenecks, their frustrations? What are likely to be their concerns? Because what you want to do in your marketing is not go, hey, we've got the greatest product since sliced bread, quality price service, which is what everybody's saying. But what you want to do is identify problems you can solve, opportunities you can help them seize, and in your messaging, you want to dangle problems and opportunities. Okay, uh, so, so step away from the physical product you sell. Think more about the result it delivers for the practice, for, for the staff, for the patients, for the profitability, for the ability to get insurance claims processed faster, for compliance with regulations. Think about that and that becomes the hook for your products, okay? So in your second step, you're going to define what your ideal visitor looks like and what, your, what problems you can solve and what opportunities you can create. Another thing I want you to do is I want you to engage your sales team, your dealers, your distributors, however you go to market, and I, I want you to run a model that we call CPS, Customer Prospect Suspect. On the base of the triangle, is existing customers. I want you to sit down and make a list of every existing customer that you have that are likely to be at the midwinter meeting or within geographical striking distance. Um, okay, and reach out and let them know you're going to be there and set an objective for the meeting like relationship management, probing for additional opportunity, keeping your ears to the ground for change or even advocacy. Okay, so you're going to identify customers and set an objective for meeting then you're going to go over to prospects, people that are already in your sales funnel or your pipeline, and you have one objective for getting them to the show into your booth, to move them to the next step in your sales cycle. I tell you, there's a lot of low-hanging fruit here. Uh, I've had many, many of my exhibiting clients literally pay for their exhibiting complete program plus profit by closing time by targeting prospects in the pipeline and using the show to bring them to closure. And then the third group is suspects. And I have them in blue because you don't have any meaningful dialogue. It's, it's basically the previous slide. It's a profile match. And you only have one objective, to open the door, get a foot in the door. And so here's what I'd like you to do with this strategy. Build a list of X number of names of each, 10, 10, 10, 20, 20, 20, whatever makes sense for you. Have three direct contacts with every name on your list. Try to get either confirmed appointments or verbal commitments that they're coming to the show and they plan on seeing you and keep track of that. If you will get your sales team to run this strategy, I could stop this webinar right now and you would have a booth full of the right type of attendees. Customer, prospect, suspect. You never want to go into a major show like the CDS Midwinter Meeting without reaching out and touching your customers. Why? You don't want them to end up at the show because a competitor invited them and you didn't. Okay? So do not overlook this group of people. All right, let's talk about lists here. Okay? Trade show list sources when they're available, the pre-registered attendee list, the previous or the post-show attendee list. The average attendee only goes to two shows a year. Uh, the previous shows list is available through CDS. I would be looking into that. Um, that CPS model that we just uh, talked to you about, build a list through there. Uh, previous uh, booth visitors at this show and maybe other shows you've done that are you know, within the uh, geographical area. Anybody who's inquired about your company product services over the last three to six months whether it's advertising, direct mail, or your website, opt into your email, social media, likes and friends and whatever you might be doing there. Uh, talk to your reps, talk to your dealers, talk to your distributors. Have them put together lists. 
trade publication readership lists, professional journal readership lists, another great source. So what you want to do here is try to make your list count three to five times this number I'm going to walk you through. So step number two, let me bring that home. I want you to identify your internal list sources and I want you to identify external list sources. Okay? And then I want you to see what the count is, how many names are on the combined lists so you know what your, how big your target audience is. In step number three, this one is important, so grab your calculator. I want you to do this with me. Okay, trade shows are about face-to-face -face contact. And the, the truth is, you do not have an unlimited amount of capacity to interact with visitors. In fact, you have a very limited or a finite amount. I'm going to have you calculate that number right now and tell you how to use it to radically improve your trade show program. Okay, so... The CDS Midwinter Meeting has 23 exhibiting hours. How many people are going to be standing in your exhibit on average during the, all 23 hours for the purpose of talking to visitors? In my example, I have three. Staffing rule of thumb, 50 square feet per staffer. If you're in a 10 by 10 booth and you're going to tell me that you're going to have four staff in your booth, I'm going to tell you that you're going to have a very serious problem. You know what it is? Too many booth staff, no space for who? Dentists, hygienists, office managers. Okay, the rule of thumb is 50 square feet and a 10 by 10, two, maybe three staffers. Now, multiply those two numbers together and you have your total staff hours. Next, listen carefully to this part in blue. A target number of interactions per hour per staffer. Three, conservative. Four, moderate. Five, aggressive. I want you to pick one of those numbers, three, four, or five. I want you to multiply your total staff hours by a, a interaction per hour target, and you have got probably one of the most important numbers you will ever know and understand about your trade show program. The real opportunity for you is to put your company identity, your products, your services, your staff face-to-face -face in a one-to-one -one interaction. In this example, on the low end, 207 interactions. On the high end, 345. 345. So now don't pick the range. I, I want you to lock in on one of those numbers, three, four, or five, and then I want you to set your exhibit interaction capacity. Now, back to step two, what I want you to do is your list count. Then I want you to say, okay, my list should be three to five times my interaction capacity. You're not going to get 100% of your list to your booth, but it is possible to get a third, especially if the list is good and the marketing is good. Okay, now, this becomes a goal. Your job between now and when you arrive at McCormick Place in late February, get in the mind get on the agenda, in this example, of at least 207 of step two, your profile. It's a goal. You do that, you have almost won the game before the doors ever open. Okay? Eight out of ten exhibitors do not do what we're talking about here. Do this. I'm telling you, it gives you serious competitive advantage. Okay? You will walk onto that show floor with most of your exhibit interaction capacity spoken for, you will be on your way to having an incredibly successful show because it will be the right people. Okay, enough, how much is enough? Here's your formula. Who are the right people? We talked about it in the last two steps. Okay, now, questions may be bubbling up. I'm throwing a lot at you quick here. So what I want you to do is look at your question queue and question comes to mind, type that question in and press send. And while you're thinking about a question, I'm going to launch my second poll of the afternoon here. What percentage of your total exhibit budget do you allocate to promoting your exhibit, to driving traffic to your exhibit? What percentage? Zero? One to five? Six to nine? 10 to 14, or 15% plus. Pick the number that applies. I'll give you just a moment.
All right, we're at about 60% of the uh, participants have voted. I'm looking to get back over that 80% mark, so we have a good representative sampling. We're almost there. A couple more. Great. Thank you. We are at 86%. Thanks for uh, participating, everybody. Really appreciate it. Okay, so let me show you the results here. I think this is fascinating to look at. Here we go. 14% of us said we don't allocate anything to promoting our exhibit. I'm going to send you back to the slide on changing attendee behaviors, okay, um, and ask you to reevaluate that decision, okay. 27% um, were in the 1 to 5, 32% in the 6 to 9, 20% in the 10 to 14, and 7% were in the 15% plus. So what does all this mean? Okay, well, let me show you the latest research. I want you to look at the chart on the screen right now. You will see a pie chart. I want you to pay careful attention to the orange slice up there at 10, 11 o'clock. The average exhibitor allocates 6% of total show budget to promoting their exhibit. Okay, I'm going to share another success rule with you right now. You want to succeed at exhibiting? Find out what the average exhibitor is doing and don't do it. The average exhibitor is not getting what they can and should be getting from shows. So I would suggest as a starting point that you allocate in step number four that you budget enough resources to driving qualified booth traffic. Okay? So here, here's your exercise. In your workbook, write down your total show budget then I want you to multiply it by a minimum of 15%. In this example, I've got a 30,000 total show. I'm going to spend 4,500 on promoting. And there are times when I will raise that number. When I'm in a big show, and this is a big show, I got a little booth. I don't like where I'm located on the show floor. This show is a perfect match. This audience is my dead ringer match audience that I'm not afraid to allocate 20, 25%. Okay? So let's go back for a moment because I'm going to make you a guarantee and a promise. I'll, I'll promise you this, that if you don't get enough of the right people to your booth, all nine of these areas floor space, exhibit, show services, shipping, travel, entertainment, all the rest will end up as an expense. I'll make you a guarantee. If you do get enough of the right attendees to your exhibit, all of these areas will end up as an investment that delivers return for your company. So how do you want to play the game? Do you want to make expensive appearances? Don't promote or spend very little promoting. Do you want a profitable, productive investment delivering big-time ROI? Promote. Okay, and some of you listening to me say, Jefferson, I got you, man. This makes sense to me, but it's my boss. Well, we are recording this event. We will have it up on the uh, Success and ROI Center in a day or two. I would suggest that you have your boss view part of this. I would suggest that you take the changing attendee behavior slide, you take the where the dollar goes slide, and you show those to your boss. Because of all the areas, the two areas that will give you the most leverage in terms of improving your exhibit program, your ROI, it's getting enough of the right people to your booth, promotion, and it's designing a visitor experience that wows people. That, that teaches them something that makes them want to do business with your company. So I would be looking at the overall exhibit and my space, the yellow, the red, and the orange as being my areas, and, and my staff too, that little slice up at the top, staff training, those areas as the leverage points. If I would invest more in those areas, I'm going to get so much more from the show. Okay, so step four, we're halfway through our eight steps. We got a little under 20 minutes to go and we're tracking right along. This would be a great time to uh, go ahead if you haven't done so already and uh, submit some questions. Um, let me take a look. I've got a question in the queue which I'll address right now. What are your thoughts on little gifts like candy at the booth? Um, I spoke to that earlier. What you use to attract is who you'll attract. Now, 
is it bad to have candy in a booth? Maybe not. But, you know, if that's the primary reason why somebody's visiting your booth, because they're hungry or they're thirsty or they want to win something, they're probably not really there to learn about your company, your products, your services. So while you can use giveaways, I would not make that the primary reason why somebody comes to my booth. So giveaways can work, and I could do a whole webinar on how to use them. But I'll, but I'll say this. Uh, make, make your giveaway the secondary reason for visiting, not the primary. Okay? Thank you for the question. Uh, if any other questions come in from anybody, please type them. We all get more out of these webinars when you start firing great questions because it will stimulate all kinds of thoughts and all kinds of conversation. All right, let's get back in. So steps one through four were really um, somewhat foundational steps. We identified our exhibiting goals. We identified our ideal visitor. We uh, put together our uh, list sources. We ran our exhibit interaction capacity. Step five now is that we've got to think about our messaging. Quality, price, and service since 1412 is not going to do it. Quality and price and service are the three most overused words in marketing. They are platitudes and they just do not get anybody's attention because they're overused. So in step five, you've got to give serious thought to your messaging that you're going to use both in your pre-marketing and your exhibit graphics. And, and that message needs to interrupt people and it needs to engage them. So the interruption strategy is pretty simple. There are four basic ways you can interrupt in marketing. New. And by the way, number one reason attendees visit the exhibits, N-E-W, to see what's new. You got something new? Bring it. Feature it. Don't put it over in the back of the booth in the corner with a little paper sign and 12-point type saying new. Flash new. I'm telling you, it'll, in, in many cases, it'll double, if not triple, your booth traffic. Uh, familiar. It's familiar to me. I notice it. It's unusual, and it could be humorous or it could be dramatic. It's problematic. It's dangling a problem that I have in terms of patient turnover, uh, uh, you know, um, cleanings, uh, you know, services going way past the allotted time, missed appointments, too many, too many patients missing appointments, uh, too much time spent in consultation trying to sell dentistry versus getting it done. In business to business marketing, I think problematic is the most effective strategy. So what problems is your customer likely having you can help them solve? Dangle the problems. The two key words, write these down. Relevance, importance. If you communicate relevance, if, if I see a mailer, an ad, an email, an online ad, whatever, a press release, if it's relevant to me, I'll notice it. If it's important to me, I'll engage with it. Relevance gets you noticed, importance gets engagement. So I want you to look at the messaging. Don't just say visit Jones Distributing booth uh, 1214 at uh, the midwinter meeting. Learn about the latest, the newest way to reduce patient um, tardiness at booth. Now you're talking. You see the difference? Visit, visit Jones, Jones Consulting, uh, booth 2412. Uh, learn about the latest way to reduce pa patient absent, you know, uh, tardiness, booth 1412. Wh which subject line you think is going to get more opens? You know the answer. Okay. Now, catch these four key words. These four key words, if you will fold these into any of your pre-show marketing efforts, you will radically improve the response. See, do, learn, get. What are they going to see in your booth? What are they going to do in their booth? What are they going to learn as a result of visiting? And what, can, what will they get by visiting your booth? Uh, if you will sit down and, and think about the situations and write, develop your see, do, learn, get around those and integrate that into your pre-show marketing, you will have world-class marketing in play. All right, so let's go to step number six. All those first five steps were set in the foundation. Now we've got to put it together. Okay, so you've got to analyze and select what marketing media you're going to use. Let me give you the four C's. 
captivating message I just talked about, consistent design theme in terms of color, imagery, font treatment. You want it all to be integrated and look similar. People ask me, they go, hey, Jefferson, uh, what's the best media for driving traffic to my booth? And my answer is always the same. There is no single best media. The magic is in the mix. So you want to use a combination of show-specific media, industry-specific media, and direct marketing from your company media, the combination of the mix. Okay. In your pre-show communications, you only have to dangle four messages. What you do, why they should care, who you are, and where and how to find you. That's it. The job of your pre-marketing is not to tell the whole story. Your job of the pre-marketing is to grab their attention, communicate there's something important for, here for you to learn, see, do, get, and get them to your booth. Okay. And finally, three direct hits. Okay, you want to try to touch your, your ideal visitor three times before showtime. And it seems to work best when these touches are through multiple media, which I'll show you in a moment. Okay? Now, as you think about the, the, the media, there's so much stuff you could do, and you can't do it all. Think about your goals. Think about your budget. Think about which media you have the ability to execute well. Think about the timing, where that media falls, pre, at, post. And then think about your customers and think about what media they're paying attention to and what form of messaging or offers they're most likely to respond to. Okay, and these are some things that you want to think about as you start putting together is what's going to be my uh, pre and at show marketing plan. Then, okay, take a look at the screen here. And what I want you to do here in your workbook is I want you to put a check mark or a circle around how many of these media you are currently using to promote your participation in trade shows. Go ahead and do that. Some of you are going to look at this and go, oh my goodness, we're, we're just doing one. Or maybe we're only doing two. Um, I would suggest we need to do as many of these as possible. Four would be the minimum. It's kind of like a race, like if you were running a horse, right? It would be hard to win a race with a three-legged horse. <laughs> it would be even harder to win it with a two-legged horse. With a one-legged horse, you know, a minimum of four, but if I could put five or six legs on that horse, then I'm pretty much definitely going to win. So how many media are you currently using and which should you be using that you're not? Okay. Ideally, okay, you're going to want to be doing it at least one thing in all five of these areas. Advertising, both in show specific me and industry, public relations, PR, electronic media, website, email, internet, search engine optimization, online uh, listing directories, uh, floor plans, all of that. Mail, I tell you where the clutter has gotten really, really light. It's in the mailbox. Really good time to get back into mail for trade shows. Uh, and then personal contact. Uh, from your staff, whether it's uh, in-person visits, delivering expo passes, uh, phone calls, uh, but try to do something in all five of these areas, at least one thing in all five, but the more you can do, the better, okay? So uh, with that in mind, um, there's a media that seems to be higher response media. Postcards are the power tool of choice for mail for pre-show marketing. Oversize five and a half by eight and a half, four color, personalized with the practice name or the dentist's name. Personalized URLs, are they're called pearls. Uh, these can be integrated into your print and, you know, your one-to-one -one print and your uh, mail campaign. Um, they click through, their name is built in a URL, and I'll show you one of those in a moment. Audio, video, the ability to create a uh, three-minute video on YouTube and embed the link in your email. Really powerful. Uh, voice broadcast as a way to uh, send a, a message to a thousand people for maybe th less than four pennies per contact. Uh, the key is to have it go into the voice mailbox. Um, setting up a landing page, a microsite, a dedicated page, promoting your booth, and building needs assessment and appointment enablers into the site. Really smart strategy. 
social media, you know, from YouTube to LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, blogs, your blogs and key opinion leaders and subject matter experts, and QR codes, the quick response codes that can be put on to your ads and on your mailers and in your, e where they just scan it and go straight to a uh, URL. Okay, so fold in as many of these high impact media as you can into your campaign. All right, so Lisa's going to come on for a moment here. Um, Lisa, and give us just a kind of a quick overview. I know you, CDS does a lot to help exhibitors. Could you give us a quick walkthrough of some of the stuff that's available? Oh, certainly, Jefferson. Uh, in addition to the uh, advertising opportunities in our publications, what we offer complimentary to exhibitors is the online digital floor plan where they can upload podcasts, new product releases, uh, have it linked to their social media. We keep that digital floor plan online through September before we launch the next year's floor plan. Wow. So that is complimentary to all exhibitors. Then we have, uh, as part of our new mobile app, uh, the new products and show specials where we're giving each exhibitor up to three complimentary new products, first time at seen at Midwinter, or any show special that they're offering during those three days at Midwinter. Uh, all they have to do is send me the information and we will upload that to, to our mobile app which is now available in Google Play and iTunes. Uh, we have many other sponsorship opportunities available. We try to have sponsorships priced for every marketing budget. So um, don't be daunted if you uh, take a look at the sponsorship brochure. I'm happy to work with every exhibitor to make it uh, the most successful meeting they have for our 150th, which is our 2015 show. Yeah, you know, as uh, uh, you can see, uh, we've broken down these opportunities into pre-at and post, and, uh, you know, just so you have a sense of the breadth that's available, my suggestion to everybody on this webinar is to go back, think about your exhibiting goals, uh, determine who exactly you want to, your, you know, your target customer, um, and think about what your budget is, and then pick up the phone and give Lisa a call. She's great. I mean, you know, she's like basically like an unpaid marketing consultant for you, and she wants nothing but your success, and she can help you put together a campaign, and I think it's important that you see Lisa and the CDS team as your partners in marketing to the, you know, the audience, because they've got them, you know, and they know exactly how to, they know exactly how to get you in front of them. But you've got to do some of this stuff. You can't just, uh, you know, again, you can't just show up and hope. And then, uh, Lisa, there were some sponsorships, as you mentioned. You, the, I mean, it's anything you can dream of is available. And things that are not in our brochure, we're able to uh, work with things that uh, were successful at other meetings. So just because you don't see it in print doesn't mean that we can't do it. Yeah, yeah. So if you have an idea, something that you've done, then feel free to pick up and call. I mean, it seems to work best when you work closely with uh, CDS and um, Lisa to have a you know a great experience. Hey, you got to remember, you know, there's all almost 800 companies exhibiting, and um, you got to do something to uh, stand out from the crowd. And your physical location on the show floor can only do so much, you know. And knowing how attendees have changed. Um, you got to get in their mind and get on their agenda before you, before they get to the show, and then do something to remind them at the show. If you do that, you're going to have a booth packed with interested, qualified visitors, which is what we're working toward. So, uh, Lisa, thank you for the um, input and the overview of um, the ops available. And what I want to do now in step seven is put my marketing hat on here, okay? And I want to say, oh, okay, I'm a small exhibitor. I'm out there in a 10 by 10. My booth space cost is 3,500. Therefore, my total show budget should be in the 10.5 to 17.5 range using the industry rule of floor space times three to five. I only have two goals. I'm trying to get and keep, keep my company visible so people know I'm in business. I want to drive traffic to the booth so I can generate leads and post show sales. So. What would that campaign look like for me being a small exhibitor with, you know, I don't have the big money to spend on it. Well, first thing I'm doing is that CPS strategy, customer prospect suspect. The next thing I'm doing is I'm getting in the CDS ad pack pre-show mailer. 
because uh, only 12 companies can be in that. And um, Lisa, what, what was the cost for the uh, uh, the AdPAC mailer? I believe it's uh, $1,200, and uh, it goes out to all the attendees who pre-register. So we'll send that out in mid-January to give enough people enough time to review the information. Uh, the catch is we need uh, the finished pieces by December 15th. December 15th. And then did you say that was limited to 12 companies? 12 companies. Wow. And so, hey, I tell you what, if there was nothing else that I could do, I would be in there. Why? It's, it's getting mailed to the pre-registered attendees. Why? There's only going to be 12 in there. Uh, priceless. Absolutely priceless. Um, then, you know, promote, uh, promote your show participation on whatever social media channels you're using. Make sure you get the show logo and the booth promo. Put it on your website, in your email signatures, on all of your outgoing correspondence. Come up with a good show special and or a new product and get it on the mobile app. It's, it, that's free. Okay. Make sure your description, the company description that you write for the guide, the locator, and the program is got some sizzle to it. You know, if someone reads that and goes, oh, i got to go see them. And then I would probably look at running a small black and white ad in the show program. Again, this would be a small exhibitor in a 10 by 10, you know, with those two goals of visibility and lead generation and sales. If you were a little larger exhibitor, maybe you're in the 20 by 20 range, so you, you know, you're going to have a show budget of the 40 to 70,000 range. You got similar goals, but you have two more: uh, new product introduction, and you want a, a media awareness. You want to get a good PR campaign going. So you would be doing similar things. Uh, you know, but you would be adding, writing a press release, displaying your press kit in the media office. You would definitely be having a, your new product on the mobile app. Uh, smart money, uh, pound for pound, dollar for dollar, print buy would be an insert in the tote bag and a print ad in the um, official program. Uh, you would definitely want to get your products into the new product showcase and you sponsoring a digital panel in one of the le um, lecture rooms. And, and again, I'm, I'm showing you this is a great snapshot of how to set and encapsulate your entire pre-show marketing plan on one text, and then it's just a matter of creating and executing. So that would be an example for a medium-sized exhibitor. Now let me take you through and just, you know, what does an integrated campaign look like? Well, you're doing print. You can see using a colorful ad with uh, strong graphics. Bring it to life and stretch the experience. A very clear call to action. Visit us at booth number 1147. Then mail. Oversized postcards. Remember I said digital uh, personalization? Notice it says Nancy up here on the cover. Look down on the left side. You'll see a personalized URL. An oversized postcard. And then because you have your own email addresses that you can market to, uh, you would want to do a couple emails. And you can see how this was a two-part personalized using an HTML uh, banner that, again, carried the same design theme throughout. And then maybe setting up a microsite or a landing page. In this example, uh, we're using a, a talking video host. And when you enter, there's a needs assessment, five questions to help I, in, you identify your needs. Um, and you can set an appointment. And when you interact with the needs assessment or the appointment enabler, it automatically prints out something for you to bring to the booth. And you can see in this example, we were using a flash drive bracelet, um, you know, as the response. So that would be an example of what a integrated campaign looks like using print. This would be in trade publications, professional journals, the uh, the at show, um, the official program, using mail, using email, and using web page. This would be an example. So that's our seventh step. Eighth and final step. You don't do all this just to say you did it. You do it because of a few reasons. Number one, you want to drive qualified traffic. Number two, you want to build a replicable marketing system that you can rinse and reuse for every show you do. So in step eight, you got to measure. Okay, Make a list. What media did you use? When was the media deployed specifically? How many pieces were mailed, emailed, number of readers, number of clicks, number of website visitors? 
what was the cost of each media you used, and also your, your cost per um, a piece or impression or click or response, and then tracking. You, you know, you want to track your responses. Hey, write this question down. If you're doing a good pre-show marketing campaign, you should have your booth staff, one of the first questions you ask every human being who comes near your exhibit is, how did you learn about our exhibit? So you can do some tracking here, right? Then you're going to uh, look at response rates to the media that you can trace. Then you're going to step back at when the show's over and you're going to look at the whole campaign and you're going to go, okay, what was the response? What worked here? What seemed to work really well here? Uh, what did I learn from this? Okay. And finally, how can I take this and use it for my next show and continue to use it for as long as you exhibit? Okay, so we have covered a lot of ground here in 60 minutes. I'm just about at the buzzer, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up the question queue, and I'm going to remind you that if you check off uh, now, please be sure to complete the survey because Lisa's going to raffle away a $750 um, ad product for free. All you got to do is take two minutes and complete the survey, uh, and you may win. And, and, and in fact, even if you don't win, I have a feeling there's going to be something special for you just for taking the time. Uh, be sure to uh, visit this Exhibitor Success and ROI Center. Um, this is your complimentary online knowledge portal. Make sure everybody on your team knows about it. And with that, um, Lisa, while I'm looking at the question queue, are there any closing comments, anything you want to share with the group? I uh, just want them to uh, pay attention. Uh, hopefully they've learned something today. They'll be able to revisit this program, and I look forward to working with them come February. All right. Thank you, Lisa. I've got a few questions here I'll take as we wind down. Um, question number one is, if you give out a ton of samples and information to the attendees, what is a good next step to get them to buy? Uh, you would want to create some form of a special offer whether it's a discount, free shipping, longer terms, or whatever, number one, create an offer, a special, and, and number two, put a, a, a time limit on it. Don't let it hang out there forever. Maybe it's only good for 14 days after the show. So if you're going to sample and give information, attach an offer to it and time date it would be my answers. Um, we've got a next question, and I'm not sure if it's a question or a comment, but it's saying, you mentioned direct mail and postcards. I feel they go right in the trash and don't reach the dentist. Do you disagree? Um, yes, I disagree because of um, there's less mail, and if it's relevant and important, they'll look at it and they'll engage with it. But, you know, just because you mail a postcard out doesn't mean it's going to get seen. What you got to do with postcards is make them oversized. You got to have the show logo on the card, both sides. You have to have a large visual image. You have to have a very compelling headline. You have to have three or four bullets, see, do, learn, get, uh, and then a, a call to action, bring this to the booth. Uh, I've seen uh, direct mail postcard campaigns for um, trade shows pull as high as 35% response, three out of every 10 people getting it showing up at the booth. And the reason I like mail, again, is the clutter in the mailbox has gotten really light. You want to know where the clutter is, I don't even have to tell you. You know where it is. It's in the email inbox. Okay. Now, now am I saying you should not use email if you have the addresses? No. I'm saying don't live and die on it. Don't think just an email is going to get the trick done. There's something magical about them going to uh, a trade publication and seeing your ad, then going to their mailbox and seeing your card then going to their email and seeing your email, then going to their telephone and hearing your voice message, then going on the show site and seeing a banner ad, then showing up at the site and seeing an ad in the directory, then walking down the aisle and seeing your exhibit, which has brought the whole message imagery design theme together. That's the power of integrated marketing. Uh, the more media you can use, the better. Okay, uh, the next question, uh, will this webinar be available or archived? Absolutely. We've recorded it. We will have it up on the website uh, within a day or two. And the next question, where do you take the survey? You will get an email within a few moments. 
uh, with a URL. It's being uh, on SurveyMonkey. So watch your email. We'll send that in a few minutes. And then the final question, how far in advance should I start my pre-marketing? I would say uh, you want to get this going, especially if you're using print, at least three months prior with the print component. Then you're going to want to kick your mail component in at that 45, 30, 15 day in advance window. If you're using email, you might want to do a 60, 30, 10 day in advance. Okay, um, so um, get, get your start. You're, you're, right now, you're in the sweet spot for promoting. So I would put my plan together over the next five to seven days, and I would launch here. I would get a strong hit out before the holiday break, and then I would stagger those hits in January, February, and I would try to minimally land three, but I would go for as many as I can get. Okay, so uh, we are out of time. I want to thank everybody for logging in. I want to thank Lisa and everybody at Chicago Dental Society for caring enough about us as exhibitors to put this together. And my closing thought and wish for everybody on this webinar is that you do something with what you heard here today. Because if you will, I can close this webinar not by wishing you a successful CDS Midwinter meeting. I guarantee you will have a much more successful meeting. Look forward to seeing you at the next webinar in January, and I really look forward to seeing you at the show as we do the Exhibiting Effectiveness Evaluations. So thanks for logging in, everybody. Have a great day.